Okay, so what we're going to look at now are the uh, chemical reactions of the alkali metals. So just remember, uh, the alkali, just as a bit of revision, the alkali metals are group one elements, the, group, the first group on the periodic table. And I've just taken out three of these um, group one elements, and that's lithium, sodium, and potassium. So again, these are just elements taken off the periodic table. And just as a little bit of a refresher, if we remember then in relation to the elements, so again, remember you have the chemi chemical symbol, which in this case is Li, stands for lithium. You have these two numbers, the smaller number, which in this case is three, represents, is the atomic number. It's the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom. Uh, seven is the mass number. It's made up of the number of protons and the number of neutrons. And three then also represents not only the number of protons, which are positively charged, but also the number of electrons, which are negatively charged. So here, if we look at this, and I've just taken this and brought it down here. So this is what's known as the Bohr structure of, of an atom. And in this case, it's the Bohr structure of lithium. And just to remember the Bohr structure, so in the middle you have the three protons and you have, you'll have four neutrons. And then you have these shells, okay? So these are just regions in space that can hold electrons. And then you have the arrangement or the configuration of the electrons. So in the first shell, you have two electrons. In the second shell, you have one electron. Remember, the first shell can only hold two electrons. The second and third shells can hold up to eight electrons. And um, what an atom is trying to do, it's trying to get a full outer shell. So it can do that by taking electrons from other atoms. It can do that by losing some of its own electrons or it can do that by sharing electrons with another atom. So if we think about uh, lithium, for example, and if we think about chemical reactions, chemical reactions then are really the movement of these electrons between atoms. Okay, so they're either going to be, be taken by one atom, given up by another atom, or shared by atoms. But what underlies chemical reactions are the movement of these subatomic particles that are known as electrons. So kind of just building on what we know already about um, about like these subatomic particles and the Bohr structure, I want to start to talk about and think about um, chemical reactions from that point of view and why it's so important that we understand like uh, electrons and neutrons and the arrangement of uh, these subatomic particles within atoms. So what we're looking at here then, so this is just, it's a simple, uh, structure or a way that we can lay out a chemical reaction. So what we're saying here is that if we take lithium and we add it into water, a chemical reaction will have. And these two things, like, so you normally you'll see a reaction, it'll be something like this. And um, on the left-hand side, so these guys are known as the reactants. So they're the things that react with each other. And then on the right-hand side, it's what these reactants turn into or when they change or react with each other what they change into. So in this case, you have lithium, hydroxide, and hydrogen. And generally, all of these group one elements will react in this way. When you put them into water, they'll form what's called a hydroxide. So this is lithium hydroxide, but it could easily be sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. They will all react the same way. And then you get hydrogen, okay? So the elemental hydrogen, Will be released then as a gas and we'll talk about that in a little bit of detail so what i want to look at first is i just want to show you a video of some of the chemical and physical properties of these group one elements and i'll stop the video as we go along uh, just if there's any terms that are introduced that need to be explained okay so let's listen to the video and i'll stop as we need to stop group one metals are very reactive because they have low ionization energies one of the ways that indicates that... Okay, so what it mentioned there is a thing called ionization energies. And it says that the group one elements are, are very reactive because they have low ionization energy. Now, if we remember an ion, so an ion, an ion is a charged, it's either a charged atom or a charged group of atoms. So for example, um, if we have lithium here, Okay, so lithium, if we think about lithium, uh, within its core, it has, so it has uh, three protons, okay, and it has four neutrons, 
Okay, and then it has the electrons on the outside, like so. Okay, so it has one, two, and then three. Now, so what we're saying basically is that, so we have, let's say, so imagine these are the protons. So you have one, two, and three. So these are protons, and I'll just write a P, and these are positively charged. Okay. And then opposite them, then you have you also have three so you have three electrons, okay, and I'll just write that as an E here. So you have three electrons. So if we think about so you have if we have plus three minus three, it's going to be equal to zero. So there's no overall charge, let's say, on the atom. But the second, let's say if I was to lose one of these electrons. So imagine I was to take this electron here and I was just to get rid of it. So I just, imagine we lose this electron here. So this one, we lose it. Now all of a sudden we have, we have plus three. So these are the three neutrons that are or three protons or three positive charges in the nucleus of the atom. And now you have minus two. So what's that going to be equal to? So plus two, sorry, plus three minus two, that's going to be equal to plus one. So that's going to be equal to plus one. So what's going to happen is if we take, so this is like the, the arrangement of the protons, the electrons in relation to um, lithium. So lithium is structured like this. It has three positive charges in its nucleus coming from the protons and then it has three negative charges coming from the electrons. Now remember it just wants to get rid of this. It wants to lose this outer electron. So if it loses this all of a sudden it's going to the charges are going to be unbalanced. So there's going to be three positive charges and two negative charges now. So you have three and then the two electrons and then all of a sudden this this atom of lithium is going to be positively charged. So it'll be positively charged. So imagine this is the, the atom of lithium. So it'll overall carry a positive charge. And this is what's known as an ion. It's an ion, okay? So what that means is that it has more positive charge in its nucleus than it has negative charge from the electrons outside. Now you can also have the opposite can happen. Let's say, for example, if you have an atom that has one more electron in its outer shell and it has protons in its nucleus, then it will become negatively charged. And that's also an ion. Now, what will happen is these two ions will attract each other or come together and form what's called an ionic bond. But when we talk about the low ionization energy of, um, of these group one elements, that's what it means. It means that these atoms, they just want to lose this outer electron and when they lose it, they become an ion. And it doesn't take an awful lot for it to lose this outer electron. So it has what's known as a low ionization energy. So ionization just means it's the process of the atom uh, turning from a neutral atom, which has equal positive and equal negative charge, to becoming an ion. And in the case of the group one elements, that ionization energy is very, very low. So let's continue on. Our reactivity is the way that we store the metals. Group 1 metals are typically stored under kerosene or mineral oil to prevent or limit the reaction with the oxygen in the air. Let's look at some of the physical properties for group 1 metals. So again, they are so reactive because this one electron on the outer shell that they will react with everything. So for example, they will react with, with lots of things. So for example, if you keep them in the air, remember air is made up of oxygen, nitrogen, water, vapor, and um, it'll react with the water and the air, the oxygen in the air. It'll lose this electron to it. And that's what we'll kind of talk a little bit about that, about that chemical reaction as well. How do these group one elements act, react with water? And we can see here, this is how, so when you take lithium, you put it into water, it reacts and it gives you lithium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. And that's what we will look at that reaction in a little bit more detail. But that's what it means. So they have to actually be stored under oil, for example, to stop the, these atoms or these elements from reacting with their 
the oxygen or the water, for example, in their environment. We'll start, we'll start out, out with lithium. lithium. The lithium is coated at this point in time with a layer of both the oxide and the nitride. We end up with a fairly dull gray appearance. Group 1 metals tend to be relatively soft, and we can easily cut the metal with a knife. What we can do is we can see the shiny metallic surface underneath. If we bring in a conductivity tester, we can see that the lithium is an excellent conductor of electricity. If we have okay, so we can see here um, so let's just go back a little bit. Okay, so we can see there's a couple of things there that we can see, okay? So number one, we can see that it's very easy to cut. So it's very what's known as malleable, as in it's easy to shape and to cut. So it's, it's almost like butter, you can just cut straight through it with a knife. The other one as well is that, and, and that like malleability is very a useful property, a useful physical property in relation to elements. Like if you think about like why is it good to be able to for things to be malleable, like you can shape them into um you can shape them into tools, for example, or jewelry. Now you wouldn't make jewelry out of lithium because it's so reactive with oxygen and water. But if you think about things like gold and silver, so again, they're very malleable as well, and they're very kind of shiny as well. And that's why that's one of the physical properties that that we like about such elements because they're easily malleable. You can actually use them to make uh, you can use them to make things like jewelry, for example. If you take copper, for example, like copper pipes, like in your house, the uh, heating system, the, the the veins, if you like, that carry all of the water around your house, will be made up probably of copper and copper is used because again it's very malleable like this it's very easy to this is very very malleable it's more malleable lithium would be more malleable than copper for example but that's that's what we mean and it's also shiny as well that's one of the other properties of it and um, also as well the other thing it mentioned too is that they're good conductors of electricity so what means is what that means is that they will let electricity flow through them so they so for these group one elements, for example, are very good conductors of electricity. They will let electricity move to, through them. OK, so let's continue on. Add a piece of lithium to the water. One of the things that we noticed is the fact that the lithium floats. Group one metals are less dense than water. We also see that the lithium reacts very rapidly with the water. This is a single displacement reaction producing hydrogen gas and lithium hydroxide. The lithium hydroxide is very water soluble and dissolves in the water. The hydrogen gas escapes. If we trap some of the gas in a test tube, we can test that the gas is actually hydrogen by testing its flammability. We can test that lithium hydroxide. Okay, so. What we, what we looked at there was a chemical reaction. So a piece of lithium was taken, and so it was here, it was taken, and it was put into the beaker of water. So again, you have these two. So you have the lithium and the water, and they would be known as the reactants. They're the two things we put together to cause the reaction. Then we had a chemical reaction. You've seen it kind of, it floated on the water. So lithium is a very light element. If you think about where it is on the periodic table, it's quite light. So if you take, for example, um, like if you look at where lithium is and where oxygen is on the periodic table, you can see that lithium is much lighter than um, oxygen. Um, lithium, its mass, the mass of an element comes from the protons and neutrons that are within the nucleus of the atom. So you can see that the mass of lithium, for example, is seven, and the mass of, of oxygen, if you look at it on the periodic table, it is, is much heavier than that. So as a result of that, lithium will actually float. It's less dense, so therefore it'll float on top of uh, the water. But what happens is, is that a chemical reaction starts. So you get lithium, it reacts with water, and it produces lithium uh, hydroxide. So that's a, a substance where you get the lithium and part of the water molecule add together. And then also as well, you get a gas that's been that's been produced as well. Now within the chemical reaction here, the gas was is hydrogen gas. That's what's being produced. 
and you could see where the hydrogen gas was collected in another little test tube and then it was ignited using a candle to show that it is hydrogen and it is um, when it ignites it has a certain color and that's very indicative of the fact that it's hydrogen and it also ignite it it makes a very distinctive popping sound as well so again this is what's known as a chemical reaction so you get your reactants uh, lithium and water and they react with for example they produce the products which are these guys here and um, which is lithium hydroxide and hydrogen and we're going to look at that reaction in a little bit more detail now in relation to so remember all chemical reactions are the movement of these electrons these subatomic particles that are outside and um, outside the, the nucleus of the atom so let's start to kind of look at this in a little bit more detail then okay so let's look at this in a little bit more detail so we'll just move down just bear with me. so these are the reactions of the alkali metals so again we're just taking the example of lithium so if we, if we look here so what we're basically looking at is the uh, a chemical reaction of lithium so we take lithium we add it to water and we get lithium hydroxide and hydrogen so this is this is just a simple chemical equation here that shows um, the reaction and how it and how it happens so bear with me now now if we look here okay so this is very very high level this one here so it just says it's lithium and water and you get lithium hydroxide and hydrogen now if we look down here so this is exactly the same it's the same uh, reaction but it's just written in a different way and we get we get more detail from it here so what we're saying is that we have two lithium atoms will react with two ox or two water molecules so you have lithium so again it's just represented we, we have a two here in front of the chemical symbol for lithium which indicates that there's two atoms of lithium reacts with two molecules of water so you have two h2o so you have lithium and water and then you get a reaction and you get two lithium hydroxide so lithium hydroxide what's it made up of so it's made up of lithium we can see the element symbol li it's made up of an oxygen we can see the, the oxygen symbol and it's made up of a hydrogen as well and then also then as well you get hydrogen gas so you get two hydrogen atoms then produced as well so again we're going from let's say less detail to a little bit more detail now what we can do is we can actually look at this chemical reaction and look at how the element or how the electrons move in relation to the reaction and that's what we're looking at here so what we're looking at when we look at this so what we have here okay so here we have so this and this these are the two lithium atoms okay so the two lithium atoms here and we can see i've just made this one slightly bit bigger and i mean i might make this one just a little bit bigger as well so we've two lithium atoms here then we have and we can see these are in within their the bohr structure arrangement and then we have uh, two water molecules so two lithium atoms plus two water molecules so you have the oxygen and it's attached to two hydrogens the oxygen and it's attached to two hydrogens so if we have a look we'll just zoom in a little bit on this so you have so you can see here so we have an oxygen and it is sharing electrons with two hydrogens now this bond here if we remember is called a covalent bond so covalent bond so this is where where two atoms will share electrons with each other so remember oxygen it has six electrons in its outer shell it wants eight and hydrogen has one electron in its outer shell and it wants two so therefore as a result what happens is hydrogen and oxygen come together and they share the electrons with each other and they form this what's known as a covalent bond now what we need to think about is what happens when lithium comes into contact with water for example so we have lithium atoms coming into contact with water molecules here um, as per this chemical reaction so you have two lithium two lithium atoms plus two water molecules well what's going to happen is remember lithium wants to get rid of this outer electron 
So it's, it wants to just get rid of this. So what it's going to do is it's going to get rid of this outer electron. So each of these atoms are going to get rid of these outer electrons and it'll give it to the water molecule. So it'll give over these electrons to the water molecules. Okay, so then what's going to happen? So when that happens, you're going to have two lithium atoms that are going to have, they're going to become two lithium ions. So this is going to become positively charged and this is going to become positively charged. So remember the reason this is positively charged is because lithium has three positive charges in its nucleus, so from the three protons. And if it loses one of its three electrons, there's going to be one, there's going to be an extra positive charge within the nucleus. Okay, so it's going to become positively charged because it has three positive charges in the nucleus. Now it only has two negative charges outside in from the electrons outside in the shell. And um, so it's going to become what's known as a positive ion. Now what's going to happen then is that those um, the electron that the lithium ion gave off, okay, it's going to attach in here. So imagine this is the electron. So what's going to happen is the um, the oxygen or, or the water molecule is going to take this electron. Okay, so imagine that these two electrons here. So one of these is the electron that's after coming from the lithium. And as a result of that, one of the hydrogen atoms is going to break away from the water molecule and it will take with it one of the electrons that it was sharing with the, with the uh, water molecule. And that electron that it was sharing with the water molecule, that's what's going to be taken up by, that, that's going to be taken away by one of the hydrogens. And then the electron that the lithium atom gave up will stay here with this uh, water molecule. Now, what, what happens when you have, so you have an oxygen now and it's bound to one hydrogen, this is what's known as a hydroxide ion. And what's going to happen within this system, okay, you're going to have the number of negative charges that come from the electrons between these two atoms are going to outweigh the number of protons or positive charges from these two atoms. So it's going to have one more negative charge than it has positive charges coming from the nucleus of, of both of the atoms. So as a result of this, the overall charge on this um, hydroxide ion, so it's called hydroxide because it has a hydrogen and an oxygen atom, it's going to become negative. So now, and the same thing is going to happen. So remember this happens, it happens with two. So we have the same here, we've two, we've the two lithium ions. So what's going to happen is both of these are going to become negative. So this is negative. Sorry, this is positive. Okay, this is positive. Okay, and then this part is negative. And this is negative. So as a result of that, what's going to happen is because this is negative and this is positive, these are going to come together. So both of these are going to come together and you'll get what's known as an ionic bond. So they're basically going to bond together and they will bond together and they'll form what's known as an ionic bond. So this, so we have like ionic bond, so it's an ionic bond. So it's an ionic bond. So these two will join together and you'll get this, uh, this you'll get two of these molecules formed here. Now we have the two hydrogens then. So what, so again, remember hydrogen, it wants to have two electrons in its outer shell for it to be full. So these two hydrogen, uh, atoms will come together and they will form this what's known as a hydrogen molecule okay so they, they'll come together and they will share their two electrons with each other and they'll form this bond here which is what's known as a covalent bond 
Okay, so covalent. So covalent bond. So again, you get an ionic bond here that's formed. So you have two charged um, particles that come into contact with each other. So opposites attract. And then here you get the uh, covalent bond. So really like what's actually happening? Well, what's happening is you get this movement of electrons. So in this case, the hydrogen part is going to be formed when these two hydrogen atoms come together and they share electrons with each other. And it's known as a covalent bond. Uh, these two guys here are formed when you get these charged particles, they come into contact with each other and they form what's known as an ionic bond. So again, th these are group one, so the group one alkali metals. So what happens is when you react them with water, this is what happens. So the outer electron is, is given to the water. The water molecule then loses one of the hydrogens. And as a result of that, it keeps the electron here. So this becomes positively charged. This ion here becomes negatively charged. And then as a result, these two come together and they form an ionic bond. So what you do, what you get is you get two lithium atoms and two water molecules. They'll, pro they'll produce two lithium hydroxide compounds. And then you'll get um, hydrogen gas then being formed as well. So that's, that's like, that's, basically like how this chemical reaction unfolds. So just as a recap, so you have lithium plus water gives you lithium hydroxide and hydrogen. So like to look at it in more detail, you need two lithium atoms and two water molecules to give you two lithium hydroxide compounds plus two hydrogen gas, plus, plus a hydrogen gas uh, molecule. So this is what it is. So the lithium, so this is one lithium. So your two lithiums, this is one, this is the other one. Your two waters, this is one water, this is the other water. Uh, then you have your hydroxide, lithium hydroxide. So that's this lithium ion attached to this hydroxide ion. So there's the two of them there. And then you have the hydrogen gas. So you get these two hydrogen atoms, they join together and they, this is the hydrogen gas here that you get produced. So again, all it is is, it's just the movement of electrons um, and this happens because of um, the reactivity because these group one elements are very very reactive so just as a general like when you get these group one elements so if we have a look at all of these so if i bring down these group one elements here so some of these are some of the group one elements they will all react exactly the same way so we looked at the example of lithium but this could as easily be sodium or potassium either okay and they'll form they'll react exactly the same way with the with the water molecules and you'll get the exact you'll get the similar hydroxide uh, compounds being produced and you'll get the hydrogen gas being produced as well so that's how um group one elements how they react with water so they they produce um hydroxide compounds uh, such as these here so what we look at in the next lesson is what happens, how does lithium react with oxygen? So instead of water as one of the reactants, we look at how does lithium react with oxygen. Okay guys, I hope that makes sense. Again, we'll go through more examples of these and uh, hopefully it'll, make, it'll, it'll help to kind of make a little bit more sense as well. Okay, thanks for your time.